The following story is a dramatization of possible future events that probably won't happen. The names have been changed to protect the guilty, us, from slander charges. It was a night like any other. Or day. I couldn't really tell, as the lab didn't have any windows. I was busy soldering together a digital logic circuit. An unfortunate power surge had fried my earlier design, and I had a deadline to meet. When suddenly... It was the Dean. He was in hysterics. Someone had stolen the International Prototype Kilogram, and the International Committee on Weights and Measures was breathing down his neck. As the head of the only metrology group on campus, it was up to me to figure out who done it. The name's Stone Dalton. I'm a PI. And this is the story of that case. The International Prototype Kilogram. 2.2 pounds of vintage international standard from 1889 was the kilogram. It was the kilogram against which all other kilograms were measured, an item whose mass was quite literally the definition of one kilogram. The weight of the world rested on this mass, and someone had switched it with a copy. Who had the know-how, the cunning, nay, the gall, to take it right out of the Bureau International des Poids et Measures just outside of Paris, France? I wrangled up the usual suspects. First up was Aya Robbins. She was the kind of dame you had to call up on the telephone because she lived in a different country. I knew Aya had been developing a method to make the IPK obsolete. Hello. Hello, Aya. What do you want? She had the kind well, of voice that made you want to sign your grant proposals with X's and O's. No doubt she had suckered many men into writing off her laboratory expenses. Darling, I hate that artifact, we all do. But there is a way we do things in my community, and it is not by theft. And what community is that? Georgia. I didn't know you lived in the South. Da, Georgia. The one next to Armenia. Country aside, she had a point. You see, the IPK had a lot of enemies out there. Jokers to its Batman. European Unions to its Switzerland. Starbucks to its independent coffee shop that just wants to bring a sense of community to this lonely, lonely world. They figure, you have a single object that's defined as the kilogram mass, and that means if anything happens to that artifact, if it chips or if it absorbs a few micrograms of water, then bang, the old kilogram's dead. And the replacement? Number 23 from Finland. Over 100 micrograms heavier than the IPK, and the heaviest of all the IPK copies. No, I did not steal it. I am a scientist. I would defeat IPK with public humiliation. It will be impaled on Pike as example to other arbitrary international standards. Scientifically, of course. I will ensure no one accepts it, even on its own merit, imaginary as they may be. Besides, there is a simple way to clean up this mess. It's as simple as measuring the forces. Of course, when she said it was simple, you could bet your keister it wasn't going to be. Basic electromagnetism. Magnetic fields interact with electric currents. So we use magnetic field to levitate an object that carries current, like wire. The weight of that object is related to the strength of the magnetic field. So, kilogram is defined by magnetic field. It is called watt balance. How clever. Kill the kilogram with a parlor trick. Any lab in the world could put electricity through a wire and know what the kilogram was. Any lab with a million dollar watt balance, anyway. We would have to define the Planck constant or standard unit of George the Coulomb to separate kilogram from those units. Ah, yes. Fix the basic unit of energy and use Einstein's equation, E equals mc squared, to derive the kilogram. Dad. I asked her if she had any more leads in the investigation. I'm sorry, I cannot help you. But let me tell you, if I was kilogram, I'd be happy to leave the confines of that French prison and go on cruise to best places, like maybe Tijuana or Cabo, and drink vodka with Pico. Mexico is nice this time of year. She left me feeling unbalanced. The method she talked about made sense, although, to be honest, I was having trouble telling the chicken from the egg. It's great that we have the capacity to define the kilogram with measurements in the lab, instead of with some knick-knack paperweight sitting in a vault, but these electrical force calculations seem so complicated and roundabout, like earning a doctorate in medieval literature so you can open your own bakery. I knew there must be an easier way to define the kilogram. It was the Dean again. He told me that the thieves took it in the middle of one of its cleanings. Swapped it out. Sometime after it had been rubbed firmly with a chamois cloth soaked in ethanol and ether. Sometime after it was then steam cleaned with bi-distilled water. 
sometime during that seven to 10 day period when it was just sitting there, settling. I cross-referenced the dates and found out a recent mathematics conference was in town the same week the kilogram was stolen. A conference I knew had to be attended by one man in particular, a mathematician in Georgia by the name of Teddy Hillside. He'd always had a grudge against the IPK, and I knew he'd like to see it gone. I knew exactly where to find him, to within a finite improbability, hitchhiking on the side of the road. Hey, Teddy, come he on tossed his here. towel in the back seat. To as soon as we got moving, I grilled him. Teddy, someone stole the kilogram. What? And I need to know who took it. So you came to me? It was difficult to parse his language through his thick accent, but I got the gist of his speech through his tone. Did you steal the kilogram? No, I didn't take it on a three-hour tour. And so what if I did? That thing has no place in the world of science. If you have such a beef with it, I suppose you have a better way to define the kilogram. That's right. Are you familiar with Avogadro's number? Yeah. Of course I was familiar with Avogadro's number, or as we like to call it, the mole. Well, it's as simple as defining it instead of measuring it. I could tell he was nuts. See, right now, we have to figure out what Avogadro's number is based on how much mass the IPK has. So I'm thinking, why not define Avogadro's number and use that to define the kilogram? It's how many carbon atoms there are in a cube of pure graphite, about 8.11 centimeters on each side. You know, pencil lead. The kid had a point. Defining Avogadro's number, roughly 84,446,889 cubed, was simple. Elegant. Well, thanks for your time. Where do you want to get I thanked out? him for his time and dropped him off at a dive shop, shop just south of San Diego. Just, just a little south of San Diego? I'll see you later, Teddy. Thanks, Stone. It was at that point the trail ran cold. I had talked to everyone who knew anything about the IPK. Then the dean called. Hello? Uh-huh. Apparently, I and Teddy both worked together at the Technical Institute of Georgia. And there was one more member of that group before it disbanded. Sean Lang, who was trained as a quantum mechanic there. He had proposed another new method to define the kilogram. I raced up the Pacific Coast Highway, weaving through traffic like a man who had drunk a large soft drink before watching The Lord of the Rings. When I confronted Sean about the kilogram, I got stonewalled. Why don't you just let things go? Come back when you got something more concrete tied to the case. Of course, he was eager to tell me about his method to define the kilogram. Our method relies on the fact that matter can act as a wave and a particle. Matter's a wave, waves are matter, quantum mechanics. They know how to make everything more complicated. See, we take two identical cesium uh, waves, hold one steady and send the other one around a loop. When they meet again, they're not identical anymore. They interfere with each other. And as Einstein would have it, the interference pattern depends on the atom's mass. Ah. Instead of tying it to energy or to a counting exercise, use time to define the kilogram. Einstein was becoming more and more important. Did he inspire someone to undertake the heist? Or could it be as simple as Avogadro and Planck's constants? How many dead scientists did I have to drag into this? It was a lot to take in. But soon it all didn't matter. Someone found it, off the coast of Mexico, sitting at the bottom of the ocean, tied to a chunk of concrete. Whoever had heisted it was long gone, and by now the kilogram was useless. It had been tarred and feathered, with one pound of tar and one pound of feathers. We couldn't tell which weighed more, but either way, it didn't weigh a kilogram anymore. I hate that artifact. We all do. Wait a second. I would defeat IPK with public humiliation. I didn't take it on a three-hour tour. Oh, nice. that dive shot? Come back when you got something more concrete tied to the case. Tarred and feathered in the sea by Mexico, tied to a chunk of concrete. It all made sense now. Aya, Teddy, and Sean all worked together in Georgia, and they all hated the kilogram. But they had to break up the band over creative differences. They couldn't agree on the best way to redefine it. But a common enemy drew them back together for one last collaboration. One last gram to kill. This was a violation of the academic honor code if ever I heard it. I told the dean and filed a report with the International Committee on Weights and Measures. Aya and Teddy saw no repercussions for their actions. We have tenure. Sean, however, faced the full gravity of the situation and was forced to remain a postdoc indefinitely. Oh, one more grant, one more grant, one more grant, one more grant. 
I published a paper based on the case. The kilogram as we knew it was gone. That mass had been laid to rest. Even with the plot uncovered and the culprits identified, the Georgia trio had succeeded. The kilogram had to be redefined. But whose method would be picked? One they suggested? One we haven't even heard of? If Sean had his way, then time would eventually tell. But then again, Aya has a way of being persuasive. The definition of the Planck constant has been officially proposed for review at the 2014 General Conference of Weights and Measures. While the preceding story was fiction, the facts were real. The IPK is a real artifact. And don't worry, it's safe. However, the alternatives listed are really being considered as new ways to define the kilogram. Aya Robbins was our interpretation of Ian Robinson, a scientist at the National Physical Lab in London. Teddy Hillside was Theodore Hill, Professor Emeritus at Georgia Tech. Sean Lang was our version of Xiaoyu Lan, a postdoc at UC Berkeley, who, coincidentally, got his PhD also at Georgia Tech. As for Stone, no one knows for sure who he actually is. I like to move it, move it. Now, get busy! This podcast was produced by Lawrence Young. Oh, sorry, Young. <laughs> Written by Zach Tobin and Lauren Young. Special thanks to Jorge Cham, I love him. Crystal Dilworth. And Meg Rosenberg. The audio feed is supported in part by the National Science Foundation. And is distributed by PhD TV for Piled Higher and Deeper Publishing. Piled Higher and Deeper Publishing is a limited liability company.